Welcome back all you lovely, lovely, lovely people. Right, today I'm going to share a bit of my professionalism, a bit of my expertise with you. How to plan the perfect road trip. Now, if there's anything I am good at, it's planning a road trip. I'm brilliant at it and I love doing it. I actually get a lot of pleasure out of planning a trip. So why do I think I'm a professional when it comes to planning road trips? I've been doing it forever. Well, for the last eight years anyway, since I started YouTube. I've been travelling constantly, non-stop, for the last eight years. Doing a lot of charity walks and events and weeks away and camping trips. and I'm constantly, constantly planning and I love doing it. Why is it important to plan a trip, you might be asking? You know, why not just get in your motorhome and drive off? And I'll tell you, tell you why. Because there's nothing worse than waking up in the morning, not knowing where you're going to go, and not knowing where you're sleeping that night. Because you end up spending half of that morning planning it eventually anyway, and it stresses you out. It really does stress you out. So it's always nice to know exactly what you're doing. You know, you can always change it, your plans around a bit, but as long as you've got something in writing, something mapped out... Uh, for your day, you can always change that later. So I'm going to be going into great detail in this video. I want to get everything on the table, show you exactly how it's done. Uh, and I've, I've put it into ten little steps for you. So let's crack on with step number one. So step number one is map your route. Decide where you're going and then map it. So you want to get My Maps, Google My Maps. It is fantastic and it's free, okay? The beauty about it is you can have it on your on your phone and you can have it on your laptop as well. And you can be updating it on your phone or on your laptop. And then when you're travelling, you know, you don't have to be in the car, in the motorhome. You've got all the My Maps details on your phone. It's absolutely brilliant. The only downside is it's uh, not, you know, you need a signal, you need internet for it to work. So if you're out of range, it's not going to work, but it is perfect. I can plan a lot of my trip on my laptop through the day, and then when I go to bed, I can still carry on planning it um, on my phone using my maps. So you need my maps. So what you want to do then is draw a line on my maps of your actual route. So here is my maps, and I've already started this just the other night. North Coast 500, and I've put in our route. So for anyone who doesn't know, that is the route for the North Coast 500. Right at the tip of Scotland. So start at Inverness, ideally. I suppose you could start anywhere you like. Uh, and go all the way around. So it took me about 30 minutes to map that out, but I've pretty much gone along the road... It's not exact, as you can see, I'm not on the road. It would have taken me too long to follow it every single corner. But, yeah, that is the map all planned out, ready to add things to. So, step number two is map your wild camping spots. That's important to us. We don't like staying on campsites too often. It's just money down the drain, as far as we're concerned. We only stop in them if we need their facilities, such as to fill up with water or empty the toilets. So we need to map out places we can stay um, in as motorhome wild camping. And to do that, we use the app Park for Night. Um, I'm sure most motorhomers out there will have heard of it. If you haven't got Park for Night, you need it. And I'll just film me on my phone now, just to show you exactly what I do on Park for Night. So here is the Park for Night app, click on that, go to Maps, and then it brings them all up here. So we want to be in the north of Scotland, there it is, uh, click Update, and it's got them all there. Now pretty much this line going all the way around the edge and across here is... Uh, the North Coast 500 so what I then do I will literally look at every single one of these and See if it's going to be a suitable place for us to stop for the night. So let's just choose one and Read what it says 
parking in the woods near a forest. Right, it's got two pictures and only one star. Someone's only given it one star. So, that's one of the pictures. It's not telling us much. Now that's not bad. We could fit in there by the look of it. But why has it only got one star? Click on comments. Translate, because a lot of them are in foreign. You are no longer allowed to spend the night here. Right. So that's off the map. That won't be going on it. And I will do that with every single one. And the ones which are suitable, and suitable for our size motorhome, they will make it onto my maps. The only other thing to mention about Park for Night is what the different symbols mean. So you've got the blue peas, that's car parks. You've got the trees there, that's usually like in a forest or near some woodland. And then you've got like these orange ones here, a picture of a motorhome. This is specifically made for camper vans and motorhomes, is this Park for Night. Um, and that's somewhere where you can either get water, usually. Or it might be purple, where you can empty your black waste out. Or red is usually a pub stop or a campsite sometimes. Some of them are campsites on here as well. So, very, very, very useful. That is probably the app I use more than anything when it comes to where we're going to stop. So, once you've got all your park for nights, or as, you, as you're going along with them, you have them to my maps the exact spots. So I've already done some here. These are the ones I've done so far. So if I click on that, they'll come up on the map. There they are. So I've still got quite a lot to do there. But that took me a good four hours to get them done, I think. So I have put down every single place where you can wild camp, or where we can wild camp and be comfortable there. So what you want to do is colour coordinate each thing. This is a new layer, if you like, as I say, you can unclick it and they come off the map. So I've got all them on, I've got them all on in red, and once I've got them all done, I'll number each one of them. So step number three, you want to add your campsites, the actual campsites, onto Google Maps. What you want is to use a different colour to your wild camping ones, so you know which is a campsite, which is wild camping. And to get your campsites, it depends. It depends on you. Now, there's a couple of apps you can use. There's Wikicamps UK. That shows you most of the campsites, I think. We don't use it very often, but it's there. And we use the CAMC app, which is Camping and Motorhome Club app. We're, we're part of that club which gives you discounts on all the places you go around, and they're absolutely fantastic. You have to be a member to go on them campsites, um, and that is the one we use and would definitely recommend. So that's the app. I'll click on there, Caravan and Motorhome Club. It's quite similar to the Park for Nights, really, in, in the way you use it. Search for sites. Let's use current location and within 25 miles. It'll bring up a list for you, eventually, it always takes time for some reason, then click map, and there you go, that's all the campsites within 25 miles of where we are, absolutely fantastic. This is one of our favourites in Woolpit, £15 per night, it's called Grange Farm, so you go on it, it can tell you how much it costs, £15, there you go, just go back, open all year, Members only, earliest time you can arrive, the address, the phone number to book it, tells you what facilities it's got, and what's nearby. So that's how that app works. But personally, to be honest with you, I don't normally put this on my maps. I usually just use this app, but because we're going to the north of Scotland and the signal might not be very good, I'm going to have to put them on the map, just in case we can't get a signal. So I'll put all them on the map with the telephone numbers ready for us for when we set off. So you've got everywhere you're stopping on my maps, that's done. Alright, you know where you're going to be stopping. So, now you need to add the sites of interest, the sites you're going to visit on your trip. All depends on what you're interested in, I suppose. For us, it's, you know, it could be museums, it could be walks, it could be historic places. 
places with uh, tales and legends, entirely up to you, you know, interesting villages, whatever interests or floats your boat, that's up to you. But I'm going to tell you how I come across all the places we're going to visit. So the first bit is the most tedious part of planning your trip. You need to go along your route and write down every single town, village and city. Every single one along the route, just write it down in a big long list. Then you're going to want to take your list and go onto the TripAdvisor app. Put in every single name of every single village, town and city on your route. So let's say it's Tamworth for example. Um, and then it brings all this up. Things to do. Click on that. And then see all things to do. And it will just give you a massive list of anything to do in Tamworth. I will go all the way through every single one of them. And if it sounds slightly interesting, I'll write it down. Such as the Peel Society Museum, St Ruffin's Well, Colin Grazier Memorial, Sir Robert Peel's Statue, St Edith's Church. They're the ones which are interesting me at the moment, so I'd write all them down. I'm not saying I'm going to definitely go to them, but I'm just writing them down for now. So that's the most tedious part. That'll take you a day or two, at least. Now, this is the best bit coming up. You've got your list of possible places to go. Not villages anymore, not towns, not cities. Places where you might want to go, such as your museums and stuff. Now it's just a matter of scanning the internet, searching every single one of them sites, and seeing if it's somewhere you want to go. It might not be interesting enough once you've looked into it. It might be a museum which isn't open at the time of year you want to be there. So it's a matter of whittling that li massive list right down to the bare minimum of places you definitely want to be going, or you might go. I'm just going to warn you now that this video is going to be very tedious and boring to most people. I know it is. I'm sorry about that. No, I'm not sorry about that. I'm not sorry about that. It's going to go on and on and on, and it's just me rabbiting on, explaining things. But it needs doing. This is how I want to do the video, okay? So just bear with me please. So another way you can find places to go is, in particular for me, for this North Coast 500, NC 500, um, look on Play Store, right? Type in NC 500, see if there's an app. There might be some apps about it, free apps. And I found one for NC 500. So here it is, the North Coast 500 app. Now this is the best app I've ever come across for a for a route. View our map. Let's have a look. That is where I got my route from. That shows you the North Coast 500 route. And then you've got filters up here, so you can click filters and things you're interested in. So let's say, for example, history and heritage. So I'm going to tick that one, go back to the map, and it's put all the historic places on there. Click on one, Helmsdale Walks, a selection of walks, I'd hardly call that history and heritage, but there you go, there you go, you can click on to go onto the website, detailed map, yeah, very good, it gives you all, these, all this detail, so that's got a lot more sites on there, I'll go through each and every one of them, and add the ones I'm interested in to my maps. The beauty about this app as well is it's available offline. You can actually download, there look, the green thing in the top corner. Click that, downloaded. I've already downloaded it, it can take 8 to 10 minutes. Because when you're in the North NC500, when they've made this map, they know it's a bad signal in a lot of these areas. So they've given you the option of having it offline, which I think is fantastic. So by now you will have the bulk of the sites you're going to be visiting, but it depends, as I say, on your interests, but we like to go to places a little bit more unusual, places with ghost stories and myths and legends, things like that. Now a good way to find out more about them is on Kindle. Um, download the Kindle app, go into the Kindle eBooks app, uh, on you know, online, and download 
you know, if for example, I'm going to put in North Coast 500. I'll put North Coast 500 and see what books come up. I'll download all the free ones, because there's always some free ones, and any which you have to pay for, which sound interesting, uh, download a sample. You can download a sample of it. Ideally, you know, if you're rich, just buy the book, buy the online book of the North Coast 500. Uh, but I prefer to just do it a bit cheaper if I can. I will then go through every single one of them free books and the samples and get all the good. That's where all the tales and secret places that off the ebooks. They're in far more detail than I usually find on things like Wikipedia. Another place I will check for sites is what I've done in the past. Um, I'm always adding sites. People suggest places we can travel to, places we should see, and I put them on a map. You can see them all here. Now this is when I was going to do all the different counties, county by county, so they're all colour coordinated for a county. But what I will be doing for this trip, for example, is I will be going through all these up here and seeing if there's anything of interest on there and adding it to my map. So that's is oh Camster Cairns. So that might be somewhere we might want to visit. I'll be adding that to the map. Anything else? What's the next one? Let's have a look at this one. Cairn Leith. So there's going to be a lot of ancient some kind of saint well. There's going to be a lot of ancient things up in Scotland. I can't even read that. <laughs> oh, Brock. Yeah, so it's a lot of ancient sites up there. So I'll be adding them to the map as well. And the last place I would check for places to go would be on the English Heritage Site, or the Historic Scotland Sky Site, as it will be on in this case. And National Trust. Now, we're not members of either at the moment. We have been in the past, but we had to cancel them because we couldn't afford them. But as soon as we can afford to, I'm going to start getting them again. You can make huge savings. I think, for example, English Heritage costs about £5 a month. If you're travelling all the time in your motorhome and you go into these sites every day, you get into them for free, you save an absolute fortune. So they're very, very good uh, value for money. And that's where you're going to get a lot of the best castles and things like that. So check them out as well. And then you've got all the places you want to go. So you add them all to my maps. And if you like, you can colour co coordinate them. So you've got one for castles, one for museums, you know, all different colours. Are you with me so far? So you've got all your sites on, you've got all your campsites on, where you're stopping. Your map is now pretty much complete. This is one I did of the Isle of Mull where we went there. Um, for example, the reds are wild camping spots, the blues are sites we wanted to see. Uh, I can't remember what the other colours are, but you, you get the gist. So point number six, your map is now complete. It's time to plan each and every day. So, you need to decide where you're going to start the trip from. So, it would be here, on the Isle of Mull, for example, because that's where the boat comes over. And then you'd obviously plan which route you're going to go. You'd, you'd get a rough idea. And then you'd look at each site along the way and where you're going to be stopping. So, let's say we went north and we decided we're going to stop here tonight. We'd look at these places and see which we are going to want to stop at. Can we fit it into a day? And then basically day one complete with somewhere to stop at the night. So here's one I made earlier. This is when we went to Dumfriesshire. So day one, that is where we were staying before we... That was just getting up to Scotland. Uh, day two, so we decided we were going to go to oh, Gretna Green where Mazzy wanted to get married. Robert the Bruce's Cave the Lockerbie Remembrance Gardens and a castle and then we were going to stop at the Green Frog pub at night. So that was one day completely planned. We did that all along the trip. So the next thing you're going to need is to download an app called Pocket. Pocket is one of my favourite apps. It is something, if I can explain, it's where you can download web pages 
um, and watch them offline. So when you've got no signal outside, you've got all the web pages, you've got all the information. It's absolutely fantastic. Let me just give you a quick demo of it. So I'll quickly show you how to use Pocket. Just go on any website you like, it doesn't matter which one it is. I've just chosen London Bridge Wikipedia, just for an example. You click the three dots there, and then share. Now see that little red thing there? If I click that, that takes that to Pocket. That has now downloaded onto Pocket. So if I go into Pocket, it will be in my list now. This is places I've saved in the past. Where is it? Is it at the bottom? There it is, right at the bottom, London Bridge. So I will click on that now. And there it is. There's your website. You can read it all offline. It's absolutely amazing and essential for me. So the way to get the best out of Pocket. You get your itinerary, right? You start at day one. You empty your pocket completely, you don't need anything in there. You start at day one, um, place number one, and then you, you go searching the websites. So I would go on Wikipedia, for example. If it's a castle, I'd go on to the castle's own website. Uh, I like to use Britain Express, that's an excellent site for things like churches, telling you all the history about them. And any website I, I like the look of, I will put it in my pocket. So you'll have maybe three or four different pockets for each site you're going to. The beauty about this is you're going to have all the information such as, I don't know, you might go to a church, there might be a beautiful font there, and you want to know all about the history of the font. It, it'll be there, it'll be in one of your four pages, ready to view in your pocket. So do that for all your sites, and then they're all in order from day one, to the end of your trip, all the sites waiting for you. So you've already got pretty much all you need for a fantastic road trip, but you can go the extra mile if you like. Uh, this is what I would do ideally in an ideal situation if I've got time and I've got ink in my printer. Go on all them sites and copy and paste every single bit of interesting bit of each site copy and paste it all into Word so you've got one document right and print off that document now here's one I did earlier so here's one I did earlier this is King Robert the Bruce's cave we went to I've put the directions in there um, it's actually a campsite as well next door so I've put in the price of that just in case we stayed there and I've put down all the interesting information of all the different websites. You can see, probably, let me have a look, the different fonts. That's off one website. That's been copied and pasted off a different website. And, you know, it's probably three websites there all put into one piece of paper. So the added beauty of having it on paper is you can get copy and paste just the bits you want to know about. When it's in pocket you've got the entire website and a lot of it won't interest you. Um, and you don't really want to be at a site looking through tons and tons of things to read the facts, to get to the facts. It's better if you've got it all in blocks, you know, ready to read. Especially when you're making YouTube videos, you know, and you, you just want to start filming. It's all there in black and white in front of you. That's the best way to do it if you've got time and you can afford the, the, the ink for the printer because you're talking about a lot of paper there. You know, this is just probably half of that one trip. So that is the ideal way to do it. So we're nearly there. Number nine. Number nine is add all the stops to your sat-nav. If you've got a sat-nav system, get them stops in so that when you're wanting to go to each place, just press a button and you're on your way. Um, I'm not very good at that, I'll be honest with you. I tend to use Google Maps. I've never really got my head around the sat-nav system in the motorhome, but I have said to Mazzy earlier on, I'm going to try and put all these places into there and learn how to use that ready for this trip. So yeah, load all your sites, all your parking spots, all your camping spots and sites, load them all onto your sat-nav, ready to go. And number 10, last but not least, again this is just an added extra. You've got my maps, uh, that tells you your route, that tells you where you're going and everything. 
but it doesn't work offline. So it is a good idea, I suppose, to buy an actual map of the area. Uh, what I tend to do, and I wish I'd have kept one of these, I haven't got one to show you now, but is I'd get this map, which is three miles to one inch. I'd get this map, I would cut out, <laughs> because most times, whenever you go anywhere, it's never on one map. It's usually like two or, two or three of these, and you have to stick them together. So I would get a map of the entire area, stick it all together, and then get little coloured dots. And just like you've done on my maps, put coloured dots for your campsite, coloured dots for your places you go in, etc, etc, etc. So you end up with a beautiful map, and you know exactly, you know, so your passenger can see exactly where you're going and what, what's coming up. So that is it. I'm sorry if it bored some people. I just really wanted to get it out there. You know, if there's something worth sharing, I think it's something you should share. That's how I plan a trip. It works perfectly for me. Um, so anyone else out there, it might help them out. So in conclusion, you've got your sat nav all loaded, ready to go. You've got all your pocket websites ready to read offline. You've got a folder with all your site's details. You've got a map with all the stickers on it. You've got your daily itinerary ready to go. And you've also got your My Maps uh, as, an off as an online reference uh, which you can use on your phone and on your laptop. That's everything you need for the perfect road trip. So I hope that's helped some people out there Thank you all very much for bearing with me to the very end of this video. I appreciate that. Um, and we'll see you all very soon in the next video. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Please comment and hit the like button. That helps our channel grow. If you like what you see, click here to subscribe. Check out this other great video. And if you really want to show your support, join the club, become a Patreon for extra videos and perks. The more support we get, the more content we can give. We'll see you tomorrow on Travel, Travel Trolls, Trolls TV. TV.